Welcome to this short lecture on time series analysis. This is what is intended for the fourth week in the 2417 course at DTU. So let's get to the slide. Today what we're going to talk about is regression and exponential smoothing, um, which is basically continuing from where we left last week with global trend models, and now we'll take the step on to local trend models. So why are we actually doing this? So far, all the models that we've been using are going to have one model that fits all data that is available. Now, in reality, sometimes you say things are changing over time. I gave in examples before, say the seasonal changes and other things, but you just want a model that fits well right now. It doesn't have to fit everything because it will be too complex. So what we'll look into today is to make predictions using methods that are, you can say, based on models, but not modeled for the full thing, just modeled for the particular uh, purpose that you have. One such approach is so-called exponential smoothing. And the way it works is that you will find your estimate as a weighted sum of the previous observations. Now, one thing to notice here is, as I was mentioned before, the indexing. So we start from j equals zero, means that the most recent observation gets weight one, and then the one before gets weight lambda, and then lambda to the second power, and so forth, all the way back to the very first observation, gets lambda to the n minus first power. Now, lambda should then be a number that is less than one, because then you'll have kind of an exponential decaying sequence of weights, thereby also the name exponential smoothing. Now, what is left is this constant c, which should be chosen such that the weights sum to one, which implies that c equals one minus lambda over one minus lambda to the n power. Now, when n becomes large and lambda is not too close to one, c is approximately equal to 1 minus lambda and if we insert that up here we get this now what we want to is to get to a recursion so we'll take the most recent term here move that outside and then when we look at this whole thing here if we take one factor of lambda outside again then we have lambda times well this is effect effectively c and then if you look at this this is the previous sum that you have up here so we are left with that the nth estimate of the mu of the mean value equals to one minus lambda times the previous or the most current observation plus lambda times one minus oh, sorry lambda times the previous estimate. One of the things that you won't have to just be aware of is when you're using exponential smoothing and you want to make predictions with that, no matter how far ahead you predict, the prediction remains the same, namely the estimated mean value. Now what also happens here is that we want to update this and we can also update the prediction which is basically the same equation as before. Now I just wrote it as conditional expectation with y hat at n plus l step ahead plus 1 to get one step further given time n plus 1 equals 1 minus lambda times the new arrival observation and then plus lambda times our previous estimator. So once again for large n this is the expression that we have and this is then the definition of so-called simple exponential smoothing. We define the sequence as n as 1 minus lambda times an observation plus lambda times the previous estimator. So what lambda is, is the factor that is multiplied on the previous estimate. 
the so-called forgetting factor. This is also called first order exponential smoothing of the time series y. And the smoothing constant is sometimes defined as alpha equals to 1 minus lambda or as the forgetting factor lambda. So you can see what they're saying is alpha is the weight on the most current observation and lambda is the weight on the previous estimate. Now, the choice is then how to choose this alpha or lambda. I will try to use, you can say, sometimes alpha and sometimes lambda, just so that you are aware of the two. So alpha can be tuned by looking at the observations minus some predictions of that. And here I said t minus l, so you could optimize an l-step prediction. Typically what you want to do is to look at one-step predictions. And in the case of simple exponential smoothing, basically what you have is that you have your mu estimate that you made L time steps ago. And then it's just a matter of doing this for different numbers of different values of alpha to find the one that minimizes this sum of squared prediction errors. If the data set is large, then you can say the predictions for the very first uh, observations are typically uh, having a much greater error than what you have later on because the model sort of have to tune in. Now, that is of course not always so nice. So what you often do is to say, I'll disregard say the first 50 observations or whatever, but only you can say when what you disregard is a small subset of the total data set. And as I sort of indicated, keep in mind what you're smoothing, as in what is it going to be used for, and then modify the criteria accordingly. For instance, do you always want to minimize one-step predictions? No. And as we'll see on the next slides, when you want to optimize something for a longer horizon, the alpha value that is optimal is also different. So we'll look at a case here um, from the Jewish Research Campus where they are measuring the wind speed 76 meters above ground level and they make a measurement every 10 minutes and they want to make a three hour forecast. And here we can see a lot of data and if we do the sum of square predictions errors. Then first for a 10 minute prediction, that means a one step prediction error, we get the sum of squares here for different values of alpha. And what we'll see is that we should use an alpha value that is very close to one. It's not been evaluated above 0.95, so we should just 0.95 or higher. What does this mean? If we go back to the model that we have here, and that means that you have alpha here is 0.95. So basically the estimator is the most current observation. At least 95% of the weight is given to that. When we then move on to look 70 meters ahead, then the weight to put on the most recent observation should be chosen somewhere around 0.7. So it's still a large weight on the most recent observation. Now we're asked to look three hours ahead. So we will add an hour at a time and go to 130 minutes. And what we see is that the optimal value, as in the alpha that minimizes the sum of square prediction errors, in this case, 13 step predictions is around 0 0.6. And when we go to 190 minutes, it goes down to around 0.5. So it's still 50% of the weight is given to the most recent observation. Now, how does this look like? At first, this looks odd. So the black line there are the true observations over time. And the 10 minute forecast, 
what we found out was that's basically just the observation that was there 10 minutes before. So you will see the blue line is the black line just shifted a little bit all the time. Now for the red line, so it looks like an error, sorry, that it's shifted, but it's actually how it's supposed to be. And you will notice that when you look into some of the bigger peaks, that they are not getting to the exact same value as the black one. The red one, on the other hand, well, their alpha was 0.5, so it's supposed to be more smooth than the original data. But again, since the prediction in the simple expansion smoothing model is a constant, that means that basically what we see is uh, expansion smoothing shifted three hours. Here, when the wind is rising, it's actually a quite bad uh, estimator. And you can also notice the smoothing here, where in the original data there's this peak. You can also see the smoothing, I mean, many other places. But then, you know, along the top, everything looks fine. And you can say, well, is this good? For some things, yes. But I would say, at least on the short horizon, here it works very well. And it's so simple. And that's, you can see, one of the very good things. This is where I will just